The 15th anniversary. Can you believe it's been 15 years? I remember like it's yesterday. Since the La Plata tornado. Now, you know, on Friday of that week, we said, hey, watch out for Sunday. And on Saturday, we said, hey, watch out for Sunday. And then... Um, Sunday came. Sunday came, and we burst into the warm sector of air. I was doing some yard work. It was a warm, sticky day, and I was like, eh, what's going on? And, and then I got the call, and at uh, 4 p.m., I was on the clock. Yep. And I was actually talking to my neighbors, and the sun came out. It was a beautiful day, and I go, I have to go to work now. And they're like, why? I go, it's, it's going to get ugly. Now, we didn't know where it was going to get ugly, but we knew all the ingredients were there for severe weather. Now, when you came in, Let's talk about when the storm is a super monster cell for us. Uh, first touchdown to the well to the west of us. Yeah, out in Shenandoah County, um, just southwest of Newmarket, I believe, or mm -hmm. Mount Jackson, Mount Jackson, Mount Jackson actually. And it did a little damage, mm -hmm. but other than that, it wasn't doing much across the rest of Virginia. Funnel cloud here, some reports of wind damage, some hail, but not a tornado until it hit the Potomac or just crossed the Potomac. All right. So we had the tornado warning in, L in Luray uh, and Rockingham counties, no, Shenandoah and Rockingham. And then, as you said, it kind of traveled eastward. It was still a big storm. Yeah. That hail. And, and there were tornado warnings, but no touchdowns due to the funnel clouds. Right, right. And then, boom, crossed the Potomac. And then uh, we're talking uh, big time. I mean, just, I mean, it turned out at the time, first we thought F5. It was late, later we reduced to an F4. And it would have been the first F5 on the East Coast if that right. happened. And so that's 207 to 260 in the old scale. Right now, that'd be an EF5, anything over 200. So I remember, though, I'm a, I was in Springfield. And I'd worked in Oklahoma, so I'd chased before. And I remember looking at the top of this storm. It has a crown on it, the Sierra Shield. Thinking to myself, that's a storm I've seen in the plains. That's a Kansas, Oklahoma storm. That's not a Maryland storm. No, that's, not a, that's not a Maryland no. storm, no. And so then we, we turn our attention. So at this point, we've, already, we've run the crawls for the tornado warnings to the west, and we're, and we're tracking it. I'm in the studio with another meteorologist. We've got you on the road tra uh, tracking it. And... Uh, the yeah. hail reports. I remember the, ha the first thing I heard was the big hail in Waldorf. Which so, can be a sign of, of a tornadic storm. Not always, but it can be. So we, we start hightailing it up. I'm in Springfield, which what, I was north of where I wanted to be because mm -hmm. I was on the wrong side of the storm if there was a tornado to see it. So I was not happy about that. But because I was oh, in I Springfield. I remember you calling. You were, you were not happy. <laughs> no. I was able to get across the Wilson Bridge. We hopped down 210. I was in La Plata within 40 minutes of touchdown. Yeah. So we still had daylight when I got there. Right. So touchdown was left at 7 o'clock. I interrupted 60 minutes. It's what we're supposed to do. You we're took a lot to... of flack for that also. Yes. Uh, from my boss and, and, and viewers. Uh, I had 1,200 emails uh, that night. And I answered every one of them. Um, Would you do it again? Absolutely. No. As I told my boss, he called and said, what are you doing? And I said, my 8-year-old could pick out this tornado. This is, this is an easy one. Like you said, it was more like a Midwestern storm. So it wasn't like, eh, maybe, maybe. We knew it was a bad storm. And so all my replies were, I think when the light of day comes, you're going to see this was probably worth it. And there were people who emailed you back and said, I'm sorry, you there were correct. There were a few. Yes, they were you about got a two, few of those. About 2%. Okay. The other 98% who realized that, yeah, maybe uh, somebody else's life is more important than watching 60 Minutes tonight. Right. And just to put things in perspective, the strongest Maryland tornado on the ground in, in Charles County for 24 miles alone. Uh, the number one tornado on the East Coast, oddly enough, is in Worcester, Mass. Right. Uh, but La Plata, number, number two. A close uh, second a also. A very, very close uh, second. So tell me more about when you went down there. It, 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 Complete it, chaos. I get down there. People are still wandering aimlessly. Uh, the rescue guys, first responders, are trying to triage folks. Uh, I remember by 301 and 6, the church steeple was down. That uh, KFC mm -hmm. had been destroyed right there mm -hmm. at the corner. And it was just utter chaos. People were not sure. I think a lot of people were still in shock of what they've seen. A little later in the evening, I remember three helicopters lined up on southbound yeah. 301 for medevacs, and you could smell the, the jet kerosene or whatever they're burning for mm. fuel. You're not, you're just, that's just a smell that you don't, you don't pick up in downtown La Plata. So because it was a Sunday, a lot of the businesses were closed, which I think saved some lives. Archbishop Neal School closed. Yeah, um, but... Uh, in terms of damage, $100 million has been thrown out. And what about the fatalities? Explain the fatalities. Directly, there was one in La Plata, right. one direct, and two in Calvert County, an elderly couple in a home. I think there were a couple of other indirects. So we, we knew somebody in Waldorf, I believe, was a weather watch of ours, who had a heart attack just from the stress of the storm. So in, it's an indirect. So five? indirectly or directly, five. Yeah, five. That's a miracle. To, it is a miracle, yes. Considering On a what, Sunday evening. 
and you, can, you, when you look at those houses, you look at those neighborhoods uh, behind the hospital, I think it was Quail Run, these neighborhoods there that just got totally destroyed. And you know what? In terms of width, it was almost a half a mile wide. That's unheard of. Here. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, I mean, you know, the ones we had a couple weeks ago were 50 yards, right. 100 yards. This is like 700 yeah. yards this wide. This isn't Texas. This isn't Kansas. It's not Oklahoma where they can get the mile wide right. wedges. But even a half mile wide is, yeah, is, is incredible. impressive. And, then is, and start to finish somewhere on the ground between 68 and 80 miles. 80 I mean, miles. It, didn't, it didn't lift until just west of Salisbury. And that's also crazy for us. That doesn't happen. Yeah, so from western here. Charles County. To almost Salisbury. Right. Incredible. Across the bay, yeah. I mean, uh, we were lucky. Um, and um, part of it was, I, I think, uh, it was a Sunday evening and a lot of the businesses were closed. And, you know, we're going to talk to some folks. Uh, one lawyer actually was in his office and he's okay. And another realtor was in her office and she's okay. But um, their stories are, uh, well, they're kind of scary. I probably went down 25 in the next 30 days just doing stories. Yep. And you learn about the resilience of people. I mean, there are some mm -hmm. people come out trying to scam uh, for roofers or whatever yeah. else. Or, yeah. But the resilience, the kindness, the generosity, that's some of the things I remember most about these people in the mm -hmm. face of this uh, unbelievable natural disaster. You know, how many folks came together to do the right thing and, and even then some. And, you know, uh, you know, we always talk about preparation. And, and some folks have said, guys, we're lucky. We had three meteorologists covering the storm. And... I'm like, yes, but, but you know, and that you were lucky. And I said, like, well, sometimes luck is a result of good preparation. Yeah. And I think we prepared on Friday. We prepared on Saturday. We were the only local television station on the air live tracking it as it went through La Plata. And um, I, I think, you know, hopefully we, hopefully we save some lives as well. But uh, it's something that uh, is something that we'll never, ever forget. You know, that night, we couldn't make it quite down to 3016, about two blocks up, and there was a, a car wash gas station place. I was talking to the guy mm -hmm. inside. He tells me, and I remember this guy telling me, he was holding on to one of those big pipes, I think that must block something that's coming out of the ground. Oh, right, yeah. And he could feel him being sucked up, and he was holding on for dear life. And he didn't get taken away, but right. when you hear somebody tell you that, it, it just it puts chills down your spine. And, you know, everyone's heard the stories. I mean, as a kid, I used to, you know, read stuff, and they'd talk about Midwest tornadoes and straw going through telephone poles. Well, when you have winds of 200 miles an hour, you can take any kind of, a, any kind of an object, and it becomes deadly and incredibly powerful. I also remember just talking to you and bringing back this flood of memories. Mm -hmm. The trees that were nothing, they were the ones that weren't knocked down, here we are, we're late April. They should be full of leaves. They were completely defoliated right, yeah. from the storm going. I remember through. you like, telling me that. That just it was there were so many bizarre just things. Stripped them bare. Yeah. Yeah, well, 200 mile an hour winds will uh, and, and then some will do that. Yeah. Well, um, you know, they've recovered. They are resilient like you uh, like you mentioned. Uh, there's a actually a celebration this uh, the Saturday after the 29th. But uh, April 28th, 2002, um, we will not forget it. No, and you could still find a few scars on the landscape down there. I think uh, Mayor Ekman, who was at the time the mayor, told me there were four properties that have not yet been developed. And mm. I think one of them was being worked on, so maybe they're down to three now. So, but that's 15 years later. And I'm sure you can find some paths in the woods where you'll find the trees that are still knocked mm. down that haven't decayed. And, you know. I mean, here's a story. That poor dentist. He remodels his office, top to bottom, outside, inside. Six months later, La Plata. You just never know. But you know what? He rebuilt, and he's in business, and um, that goes to your point. I mean, folks in Charles County, resilient. What do you think about La Plata as a little tornado capital of Maryland? I mean, they've been hit before. One of the deadliest tornadoes it was 1912, I believe, killed 14 it, it's school kids. Schoolhouse. Right, yeah, schoolhouse. So I think there is something to, to that. I mean, if we had to pick an alley, yep. That's pretty much the alley. Comes over the river. It's a little flatter there. Sometimes it gets a little the uh, winds shear. Get, the wind the, shear right. changes, and so you get different directions. I, yeah, if we had to pick one, fair. Yeah, yeah, and you talked about yeah. the river, the importance of it, because when we can get the winds to change a little bit, you know, and the, instead of being maybe a south wind, it goes a little bit more southeast. Yeah. Get just a little bit that's, more shear. Sometimes that's just the straw that broke the camel's back to get mm -hmm. that storm to spin up and and because remember that thing was going for a while across virginia looked great on radar but wasn't producing a tornado until it crossed the potomac and when we talk about shear we talk about 
winds, different directions, different speeds, different levels of the atmosphere, and that's what causes the, the rotation of the storm. And, and that's one of the things that does seem to happen when it crosses over the river. Yeah, so. yeah, so an amazing day, one that, you know, the next morning, by the way, I was on CNN, mm -hmm. the Weather Channel. Mm -hmm. I was uh, page one at seven o'clock and eight o'clock with Julie Chen on CBS's CBS Early yep. News. I did our noon. I think I had a 23 hour shift. Yeah. I was a little tired when I got back. Yeah. That was when you were down and there like was, every day, too. And that was the beginning because you're right. right. We were going back and back mm -hmm. and back and back. And, uh, you know, still have people that I met then uh, that I still keep in touch with. Yeah. So, sum it up, you know, good preparation. Sure, we were lucky, but we had three Mets on it. Uh, we'll never forget it. And always remember if there's severe weather, We'll be on in it in it. You know, I know it's not going to necessarily be in everybody's neighborhood, but when it is, we will be there for you. That's sort of our first alert thing. And that's our obligation. It's not, but it's not, and it's, it's not what just, we do. Yeah, it's and it's why our, we do it. Quite frankly, it's why we do it. It's not just our livelihood. You know, some people say we have to warn. We have a legal obligation as a license holder of a TV station. No, we have a, a moral obligation. Well, we have both. Uh, uh, but to me, that overrides a legal one. But the yeah. people out there that don't care about the moral, at least you can present the legal obligation. Yeah. And so we have both. And, and that's why we do what we do. And that's why we want to warn people. Um, and, you know, let's just hope we don't have anything like that again. And I will say this. I'll leave this as, as good as some weather apps are. When a storm is moving at 58 miles an hour, which this right. one was, there's no app in the world mm -mm. that's going to save your life. Live professional meteorologists who are tracking know what they're doing with live radar right is your best bet because right. if you're if you're relying on your app that by the time that thing gets updated mm -hmm. you know you're dead and even if you, you know we have live radar we talk about this a lot we've had live radar here since 1988 um, if you have the weather service radar it's great but it'll do scans and now you might lose a minute or two it's moving 58 miles an hour you're gonna yeah, lose that's a couple of miles that's that's a lot yeah so, um, you know, just sort, of, just sort of keep that in mind. Before we go, last, last question for you. People are out there, we've got chasers. The, the chasers, you know, we've seen some get killed chasing. We know there are people. We, we, we saw some great video from, from folks who shot it on their own. Mm -hmm. Knowing where that line is, if you want to take video. You know, some people cross it to their own detriment. Yeah. I personally would not be doing that. Um, I think you got to be careful. Um, and we always tell folks to send pictures, but we're not going to, we don't want you to put yourself in harm's way. Um, but I think that's, uh, especially with social media now, and everybody has a phone, which was different back then in 2002. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really different. So yeah, we don't want you to, to be at risk. And if you can get a picture, great. We want you to take cover. <laughs> That's yeah. that's bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and if you live in a mobile home, you got to find a place underground because they're just not safe. Period. Or if you live in a mobile home, and we're telling you on Friday, severe weather's coming Sunday. Find an alternative. Go find a, a structure, whether it be a community center or a friend's house that is a little more secure, and say, hey, I may have to, I may have right. to jet here on su Sunday. That may be an inconvenience, but uh, you know, not not planning. Right. You know, you want to pay for it with your life. And even if you have a basement or an interior room, get that plan in place. You don't want to be making decisions yeah. when it's bearing down on you. So have the plan. Have the, every, every member of your family know it. We're going to go in this room. If there's a problem, we're going to meet out here. But have that in place. I'm going to my wife's uh, business, or her office, the people she works for. I'm not going to mention them. But I'm going to do a survey with them and talk to them about that. And I asked the lady, the facilities manager, I said, do you do fire drills? She goes, yes. I said, okay, when was the last time you did a tornado drill? Nothing. Uh, blank. No, they don't. They don't do no. it. It's just not something no. that that. They're, but we're 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 going to change the culture there, and hopefully in other places as well. Yes. All right. Great All job. Right. Great job.